We're back on the Fighter Select screen. The last was Conor McGregor. Now it is Habib. I think I only have Habib Pettis Poirier left. Interesting. But Habib Nurmagomedov. That's who I got. I already have a video up on my channel of Habib that kind of, you know, sparked some controversy, I guess. People were getting a little testy about the slam KOs, talking about how it was cheap. I mean, it's about as cheap as landing a hay kick after you get five knockdowns. So you land a slam after four health events and four knockdowns. Uh, during a health event, you should probably expect to get a KO the same way you expect to get a KO if you land an uppercut after five knockdowns and having some health events. So no real difference there. Uh, so not quite sure what the talk was for because that's how it worked in UFC 2. If you want, I can show you older videos on my channel of me hurting people several times in a fight, then hitting them with an overhand, getting them into a health event, catching them with the body lock high, and then throwing them through the air with body lock high suplex and KO, and kind of something that's kind of something I've been doing, but it's just not a lot of characters in UFC 2 had the body lock high, so I had to like specifically pick people. Like I had to pick Frankie Edgar if I wanted to do it, or, or Daniel Cormier if I wanted to do it, but, you yeah, know. It is what it is, but we're out here fighting Paul Felder. He's moving well to start from. He's got his jab going. I like to see that type of stuff. I think he's thinking that he's got to put punches on the side and grapple, but he doesn't know that I'm coming in here to strike. Because that's what I do. Touch him with the straight hook straight. Did it again there. Jab, jab, straight. Jab, jab, straight. Doing it up. Nice body kick. Oh, beautiful kick to the body kicks too. He just left Ooh, caught me with a little hook as I got ready to open up for the jab. I thought he was done comboing the hook, so I got ready to open up, but uh, you know, he wasn't. He wasn't ready. He wasn't done. He threw a straight hook, straight, and or straight jab, straight. I don't know. I'm not sure what he threw. He threw a bunch of punches. After a while, all the punches just start to run together for me. <laughs> All right, but yeah, he's uh, strong punch there he's kind of standing at arm's length. Well, I'm pretty sure I pressed that kick before I even got hit. Oh, one, two. He's, he's using a little bit more stamina oh, than I am. Get him excited. Get him pumped. Get him, pumped, get him amped. Why don't you shoot for a takedown? Really swung for the fences with that hook, but misses. Went for the head kick. Nice. Oh, head kick. Straight shot stab there, straight. Overhand. Nice. Look at him. Get comfortable, man. Get comfortable. I want you to get comfortable so you can start doing stuff. Caught him. Touched his hand with the overhand there. I don't really want that, but uh, you know, if it were to come, for the material, I don't get it. Man, like sometimes, sometimes I'll press a, a strike way before I'm hit, and then the strike will come out after I'm hit, like after a hit reaction, after a combo. Like it'll come out way later. That's kind of weird, but it's kind of weird. All right, let's see what he's got. Let's see what Felder's got. He's kind of using a lot of juice, doing a lot of different things, doing a lot of moving variations and stuff, moving around, throwing a lot of body kicks. I like that. All right. He's on his butt. On his butt again. Oh, man. He went from, he went from uh, bad to worse. Really fast. Nice. Dead body. <laughs> Dead body. He got reckless. He got wild. He went overhand. I uh, slipped the punch and hit him with a straight punch. And he turned into a fish. He turned into a fish on a hook. Big old bag of noodles. He got real flat. But yeah. yeah that, that's that's uh, kind of how that thing played out. He tried to throw a hook, but the straight found him first. Nice. Let's I was um, tuning him up, angle. so he got reckless, and uh, the overhand worked, but it didn't work for long, you know. <laughs> it was a nice effort. He did what he could. He got knocked down three times. I landed 37 strikes. He landed 56 strikes. He was doing good work. He was moving around, throwing kicks, kicks in the legs, to the body, to the head. He was moving around, doing good things, but I was doing what I do, looking to counter, throw less, land more, you know, that type of thing. Um, I'll be with you when I get the next fight. All right, we are back. We are Habib. We're fighting Tony Ferguson. 
It's got a six-inch reach advantage. This is a fight that just never could come together, man. This fight, I think they booked it three times. Got it on three different cards. And they could just never get both guys to show up on fight day. So, one of the sad realities is if Habib beats Barboza, we might be standing down the barrel of uh, that being the only match at lightweight outside of Connor. Uh... You know, for Tony. So, I mean, well, then again, you got Eddie. Eddie had a great performance. And Dustin had a great performance for his last out. Uh, so, we might, I don't know. Eddie, Dustin, too? Maybe? And then the winner of that will be right in line following Habib. I mean, I really feel like Eddie, Dustin, too, should be ahead of Habib. Because Habib hadn't fought in so long. And his last fight wasn't against top competition. I don't feel like he should be that far ahead in the race nice towards the title. But I think his name holds so much weight in the MMA fans' ear that I've been through that kick, man. I threw that kick before his leg kick landed. But uh, <clears throat> I think his name holds so much weight in the MMA fans' ear that they just kind of, it's just kind of, it's synonymous with the title picture. Habib Namagamedov, Habib Champ, you know, it's just synonymous with the title. So I don't really feel like, I don't feel like he's earned it as of late. He hasn't fought any top competition and he hasn't even Just fought in forever so I don't Beautiful, know it's, it's a bit weird with the left hand. we are in an era where oh. the name of the fight sells the fight to everybody you know not even to the to the casual fan to the, to the, the, the hardcore fan if it's a matchup they want to see they don't care as long as they get to see the matchup they don't care the implication they don't care who's getting jumped in the line they don't care none of that stuff as long as they get to see the fight they want to see and I do want to see the Tony Ferguson Habib fight. Uh, you know, if Tony if Habib gets past that Marbosa, of course. I do want to see that matchup, but I don't feel like it should leapfrog Pettis or uh, I think it should leapfrog Poirier or uh, or Eddie Alvarez. Both of those guys are on the up and up, and they were supposed to rematch each other a while back. So I mean, it kind of like I don't know. It's weird. I want to see those guys rematch, but I don't want to see one of those guys get ripped off. In favor of the rematch, so that Habib can get the title shot there, because Habib Champ 2017 is supposed to be him. This is be his year, but whatever. I, don't. I digress. Back to the fight. Chopping Tony Ferguson up. Chopping him straight punch there. Still working him out. Touching his hands. Got his block going. He's, he's doing. He's doing the head movements after the at the end of the combination to slip the slip the last straight. He's not really giving me much to go off of because he's running so much that all I can do is throw straight jab straight. I'm definitely under that, but whatever. Oh yeah, he's gonna come in and throw an uppercut. I definitely slipped back on that one, but whatever. Chopped him. Back to back. Flat. I don't know why he would throw a kick after taking a series of punches like that. Just as the straight hook straight ending. didn't rock you. Wow. Oh, throw a leg kick. Screw it. And straight hook straight again. Dead body. <laughs> it is what it is. You know, I'll take it. Um, but yeah, man, I don't know. Habib. Habib hang time, air time. The Michael Madoff. The undefeated the eagle. The and the end of the fight. Putting them hands on Tony Ferguson. Chop, chop, chop. Send him to the mat. <laughs> the undefeated eagle. Bow. Bow. Bip. Right in the shoulder blade. Broke his collarbone right there. It's messed up. I had a friend who broke his collarbone on a bicycle. His, uh, he, he fell over the handlebars and hit his collarbone on the bike handlebar. Like he hit a stump and like flew over the handlebars. Hit his, hit his shoulder as he passed over. Broke his collarbone. Senior year. Had to graduate with a sling on his arm. He got hit with a pellet in the eye junior year. And was blinded for a little bit of his junior year. I mean, he didn't lose his eyesight. His, you know, he got hit in the eyelid, so he couldn't open his eye for a little while. But dude just had a bad stroke of luck towards the end of the year. Each year, it's crazy. It's crazy. I went to school in Pineville, so you know that person probably will never hear this video and never know. But if he heard it, he would know exactly who I was talking about. He was a good friend of mine. He was real cool. He was real cool. He was just cool with everybody, man. I knew some people, man. I knew some people back in high school. We, I was in band, so I knew a lot of people. And I knew some people who were just like, who just generally clicked with a lot of people. And nobody ever had problems with them. So, he was one of those guys. But, uh, I digress. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed the hubby knockouts. I did what I could. I landed shots, put the punches on people, and got them out of there. So, yeah, until next time, it's been Brian at the Apex Gamer Channel. I'm working my way through all the fighters, like I've been saying, trying to get them all.
trying to catch them all. Pokemon, Ash Ketchum style. But until next time, see you guys on the flip side.